Long convex models are out. What's the future of rack? Something's missing here. This really surprised me because we clearly found Zhou Hisaishi in the context, but the system was not aware of. Let's go to our knowledge grab and fact check. I'm not so sure about whether it's a loss in the middle thing or there's something wrong with the vector similarity search. This is the enhanced answer versus the original answer. Now you see the obvious difference, right? Ever since long context models came out, such as Google Gemini Pro 1.5 or the open source large world model, both claim they can process documents of 1 million tokens. Especially their results from the needle in the haystack test looks pretty promising. This test checks how well the model can find the relevant information needed from a huge amount of text. From a previous research lost in the middle, language models seem to struggle more to fetch information, especially if it's not placed at a very start or the end. If these long context models really turn out to be as amazing as the reports show, does it mean we'll never see the loss in the middle phenomenon again? And does it also mean the end of rack? At this point, you're probably thinking another debate between long context and rack again. If that's you, you're at the right place because we're not taking that direction. I mean, why not both? Long context, rack, long context, rack. If you've been closely following Llama and Dexter Lane Chain, you probably already saw them using Raptor in some of their Rack applications. So let me briefly explain what Raptor is and why it can sort of bring in long context features into Rack. There are three main steps in Raptor. First, instead of chunking documents as we usually do, it directly embeds at the document level. And then, it groups similar documents together as clusters to form high-level summaries. So it's a recursive process to form a document tree as they call it. Now the document tree has a hierarchical structure which allows the retrieval process to reference both high-level concepts and the more granular details in those individual documents. This is how they did it in Raptor to skip the traditional text splitting, so you don't have to scratch your head to find out the optimal chunking strategy. Keep in mind that I'm giving you an overly simplified summary of the Raptor approach. If you're interested in details, I included the source in the description, so go check that out. And now it's time for us to see how this version of Long Context Rack works. This is the Raptor code from LangChain, and we'll be following most of the steps to construct a long context rack. However, we also added something different here, which is constructing the knowledge graph. You will see later in the video how knowledge graphs not only can help evaluate rack performance, but also enhance answers generated from vector search. Our knowledge tours will be Hayao Miyazaki's Wikipedia page. The famous Japanese animator and producer just got his second Oscar. The first step is pretty simple. We just put in his name and Wikipedia Loader will handle everything. Before jumping into the long context rack thing, we will be using Diffbot Graph Transformer to help us extract entities and relationships from the articles. You will later see in the video how cool this will be, as lengthy unstructured text data can be visualized. And the powerful things about knowledge graphs are not just limited to visualizations. You will know what I mean at the end of the video. So this is what I'm talking about. Originally, these texts are like lengthy and unstructured, but now you get to visualize it, including the awards that he got, the places he stayed, the organizations he worked for, or relationships such as work relationships and skills are now clearly linked and visualized. So now we already have our knowledge graph ready, we'll put this aside and circle back to the long context rack thing. It's time to run the code. This is a very long chunk of code. I'm not going to go through the details because first, I don't want to bore you guys. Second, the main focus of this video is really to see the performance of this long context rack and see how knowledge graphs can help. So I'll just run through everything. This is what we got and then add the document tree into the vector database. Our first test question is, Tell me about Miyazaki's career achievements. In this answer, Studio Ghibli, Spirit Away, Academy Award. I don't know what you feel about this answer, but a lot of things are probably missing. So if you still remember, we have a knowledge graph. Let's go to our knowledge graph and fact check. Remember we have the awards here? Currently, Miyazaki's achievements are not limited to Academy Award. You see there's others such as Japan Academy Prize, Person of Cultural Merit. Something seems off, but let's move on and test another question. 
So our second question is, who worked with Miyazaki? Here we got Takahata. Let's go back to our knowledge graph to fact check again. Having direct work relationships with Miyazaki include Joe Hisaishi, Toshio Suzuki, and Takahata, which is being correctly identified here. But again, something's missing here. Why are Joe Hisaishi and the other, I forgot his name, Toshio Suzuki not included in this answer. So then I follow up with a third question, wanting to make sure if the system is aware of the existence of Joe Hisaishi. And then this is what I got. It does not clearly state whether Hisaishi is a colleague of Mizayaki. The system, however, correctly identified Takahata and Suzuki as Miyazaki's colleague, but in the previous answer, Suzuki somehow was not included, and I don't know why. So then I got confused. I start wondering whether Joe Hisashi was even in the context. So this is what it did. And Hisashi was indeed in the context. For example, we pick this random paragraph. We do find Hisashi in the context. Because this is Miyazaki's work and Joe Hisashi composed the music, it should somehow made the inference that they are working partners. Anyways, this is another follow-up question. This really surprised me because we clearly found Joe Hisashi in the context but the system was not aware of. So at this point, I'm not so sure about whether it's a loss in the middle thing or there's something wrong with the vector similarity search. I don't know. But what we can do here is actually enhance and improve the generated answers from our knowledge graph. So let me show you what it looks like. I asked exactly the same questions as I did before who worked with Miyazaki and it correctly returned Takahata, Suzuki, and Hisaishi. If you don't remember it's okay there we go and I also asked about his career achievements and here it correctly fetched other awards Miyazaki has gotten so we can use the information to improve the generated answer I'll show you probably the simplest method while the changes can already be obvious to you. So I just call chat OpenAI and guide the system to enhance the original answer with information from the knowledge graph. Look what we got. So the who are Miyazaki's colleague question, it's being enriched, right? Now you not only see Toshio Suzuki, but also you have Joe Hisaishi, where his profession as a composer is also included. So how does it know that Hisaishi is a composer? It's because in our knowledge graph, Joe Hisaishi's position has a record of composer. So you see that multiple structured information can be easily stored and extracted from the knowledge graph. This is the enhanced answer versus the original answer. Now you see the obvious difference, right? Let's move on to the next one. We'll just look at the difference. So it was about Miyazaki's achievements. Originally, it's a very simple answer and up here it's more solid like not only academy award but also other merits such as person of cultural merit and this and others which adds more context and becomes more informative too well, finally here, there are still lots of challenges to use long context models, such as demanding memory requirements and high latency. Regardless, long context models are definitely changing the way we think about RAC, and long context RAC may be a future application. As you saw in the video, adding knowledge graphs to these systems can be really helpful as a source of validating information. And I hope your takeaways from this video are that knowledge graphs are not just fun visualization tools. They can be powerful at grounding trust worthiness in LLM-based systems. Let me know if you learned anything new about knowledge graphs, and I'll see you in the next one.